Hello, welcome to week three. We are in feminine hearts. Okay, so let's look at the planets, okay? So, for the rest of the month, so we've got on the 15th, okay, we are moving, right? We've moved into Mercury retrograde, right? And, um, I believe that's on the 14th, correct? So then on the 16th, the sun conjuncts Pluto. And I've been told, right, this is when you are going to feel assertive and influential. But Spirit is saying that the sun conjunct Pluto in this Mercury retrograde, it's like a magnet, okay? You are magnetic. Every thought, okay, is manifesting. Like you are the magic wand. And so if you come in assertive and influential in a positive way, you're attracting positive things. If you come in in a negative way, you are attracting negative things, right? Like attracts like. We also have on the 18th, both Mercury sextile Chiron and Uranus stationing direct, okay? Uranus went into retrograde in Taurus back in August of 2021. So all the uncomfortable karma that you have released from August 2021 to January um, 18th, right? Now here comes Chiron to kind of like heal, bandage, you know, fix those wounds. And it really kicks on like a psychic sync up. Okay. On the 19th, the sun enters Aquarius. Happy birthday, Aquarius. Okay, and this is going to shine the light on any of those dreams that you've had that are really um, coming in as outdated. Okay, on the 23rd, the sun conjuncts Mercury. There will be a lot of thinking, okay, about what you want to say. I actually, I'm almost getting a collective energy of, I don't know if we're going to go back into a lockdown, but it's going to be a feeling collectively of being shut in. Okay. And so on that Sunday is when the sun conjuncts Mercury. Okay. It's the sun on a Sunday, of course. So it's very powerful energy. And it may make you just pissed off and want to say things that you probably should think about. On the 24th, when Mars enters Capricorn, which is a lots of change, lots of change, lots of change, lots of change, right? You're going to really need to focus on planning and preparations for it's a Monday, right? Like I've got to plan, I've got to prepare. How do I move myself forward in this energy that I'm feeling locked into? And on the 25th, <laughs> Mercury retrogrades into Capricorn, okay? And it's saying, get serious about the changes you know you need to make, okay? You planned, get serious. On the 28th, the sun will sextile Chiron. This will be a turning point, I feel like, for the healers, okay? Be open to those spiritual messages, but don't try to interpret them all. Just let them come. On the 29th, Venus stations direct out of retrograde, okay? It's really going to bring into focus how you relate to other people, right? In love and relationships. And they told me to think of coming out of this Venus retrograde, like the blossom, right, has opened up for this production of honey. Okay, but it's going to be, I feel like, a hard week there from the 23rd through the 29th, okay? The 30th sun squares with Uranus, and um, there's going to be a feeling, and it's almost like you forget the whole last week happened, and you're going to be like... Dang, I've had my ship together all month. Why have I not gotten anything done, right? This can pull you into chaos monkey mind. Spirit is saying to move into Zen, okay? Try to offset 
the rebellion within you. There's going to be a lot of uncertainty that comes with the 30th, a lot of that in your head. And Spirit says uncertainty is okay, all right? Don't sweat the small stuff. Now, the full moon is in Cancer on the 17th, and I'll get to that in a minute, okay? I also want to talk about how on the 28th, um, which is a Friday, right, at the end of that long week, okay, there is a long void moon. It starts on the 28th at 12.01 p.m., and it runs front to Saturday, the 29th, at 4.10 a.m., and that's as the moon is entering Capricorn. You may not get very much sleep on that night, okay? Because a lot of psychic messages are going to be coming through about all of these minute changes that Spirit wants you to address. On the 30th, when the new moon is in Aquarius, with the void will run from the 30th, right? Now remember, on the 30th, the sun squares Uranus, and there's a little bit of rebellion within you, okay? Spirit is saying, listen, the new moon is in Aquarius on the 31st, but the void starts on the 30th. It starts on the 30th at 11.45, I think I wrote, um, p.m., and it runs, it might be 11.44. Don't clock me as right or wrong. But so 11.44 p.m., and it runs to March the 31st, Okay, when the new moon is at 4.44 a.m. Okay, they're telling me this is a big sign. Do not start your new moon manifestation until the moon void clears at 4.44. Because the moon void can make our magic bounce. Okay, and so um, who knows where you're going to send that manifestation. They're like, just wait until after 4.44 a.m. to even think about it. Just, again, uncertainty is, is great. Don't even start thinking about what you want to plant for February until you're past 4.44 Pacific Standard Time Zone on the 30th, okay? So now let's talk about our full moon, our wolf moon in Cancer, okay? The wolf moon wants rom-com. <laughs> it wants you to have romantic comedies, releasing trapped emotions, but it's in cancer, right? So the emotions are feeling trapped and hard to come up and release, which makes it feel, again, there's that trapped feeling, that even worse energy. Movement, yoga, breathing will be helpful. Okay, the moon comes in at 348 Pacific Standard Time Zone. Um, and it will make you feel like your movement forward is lagging, okay? Uh, they're telling me that through the 22nd, your emotions are going to be feeling trapped, okay? And then we move into the 23rd, right, where we move into where you want to just say crap that you shouldn't say. So Spirit's really saying, okay, be aware of what's going on in the planets and just... When it starts to feel frustrating, let it go because it means that I'm frustrated because I'm somehow I've gotten off track. How do I get myself back on track? By breathing and opening up your heart and moving into awareness. Okay, so what came through was that the feminine heart feels like it's going to be going through. And this is what the feminine heart thinks, okay? going through trials and tribulations, being tested in your faith, looking towards the stars and feeling just fleeting moments of clarity at this time. You are in what we will call the not self. Your rebirth has left you without an identity, okay? And so that feels uncomfortable. So you're looking for life direction in a heart space of G. And they showed me that the G note being aligned to our blue throat chakra energy is where the throat chakra is being blue because of cold emotions, 
okay, and not being warmed up by our fire, okay? So um, I also know that this, the G can be associated with the root chakra, right? So we're really being told fire, no fire, no alignment in what we're saying or wanting to say. So because you're not trusting yourself, because you don't, you're like, I don't know my identity, then your new heart growth, right, feels stagnant. So spirit is saying, right, let your heart trust that there is no seen path, only the felt path, okay? They said, this. rely on your internal GPS, okay? So we're going to move into the rest of the channel messages and our journey and then I'll come back and do a little bit of a reading, okay? All right, see you in a minute. Today we enter the swan, moving into the water. The lake is pretty cold. A lot of things have come up. Trying to drag us back into that mindset of control. If we look into the past, we see the fire And it scares the animal totems because it's burning in the shape of pi of the golden ratio. I feel that this is actually a sign of the fire alchemy that's coming to us because the feminine swan is not swayed. But the horses are, for they have no riders, and they are wild, running through the forest, seeking what they desire. They must get out of the fear of the mind, and let the heart guide them to where they are meant to be. And they come into the water. Here I see us being lifted up. The great condor is taking us up into the higher realm. As we are moving we're a little bit uncertain as we uh, see the world getting further and further away from us. Suddenly, we are let go of, and the condor says, fly. In order to reach your next level of ascension, you must flap your wings now. And we do. Soon we are flying. It takes more energy to fly upwards. We're being reminded to care for our body. Get sleep. As we arrive to the upper realm, I can see that we are going into our Akashic records. Okay, so we walk in, the gates are open, and we move through 
into the Akashic. We're taken to an aisle. And they hand me a group of cards. And I pull them out and I want to look at them, but I'm told to shuffle. So I shuffle them until the one that comes out that aligns with first the heart and then the mind. The heart shows me a mother in the kitchen swatting her little child with a, like a towel but more of a cloth. And more or less like saying, if you do not get out of here, I cannot get my work done. She's burdened. And while she's stirring the pot, she does not want to be disturbed. The little boy runs out into the tall grass. It's a little windy. He pulls out a kite and soon he is running through the grass with his kite above him. And the kite turns into the dragon. And they are transported into the warrior's world. There is unknown mysteries for the warrior and the dragon. What treasure shall they find? What adventures will they see? What wars will they fight? The heart of the feminine feels burdened, while the heart of the masculine craves adventure into this unknown. We move into the mind. The feminine is lying in bed, the masculine asleep. The feminine's mind is racing. All of the to-do lists, all of the things. The masculine has allowed the sensual energy between the two to calm the senses and sleeps. Both of these are the feminine's ways of not walking in the essence of rest and release. Releasing expectations, releasing fears, releasing the bonds of the to-do. This is the feminine within all of us, remember that. And she is being asked to take off the apron, put down the towel, Take the little boy's hand and go run in the grass with the kite and the dragon and see what adventures unfold. They're showing me your book. 
your book of Akasha. And our journey will be that we are going to go into the Akasha and see where it will take us. Take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. Hold on to your kite and walk out the door. You feel a gentle breeze, enough for the kite. You take your step out into the grass, breathe in and run. Let your guides take you to what you are running to, through, or releasing.
take a deep breath in, take a deep breath out, breathe in life, release the transition. Take a few moments now, write down your journey so that you can come back to it and see what it holds for you. Aho. Right, so we are back okay so let's take a look at what spirit really wants us to work on we're going to start with our animal totems okay so okay cover a little bit of underneath it all first okay so underlying this is trying to ground your emotions okay um, the hippopotamus is one of the most dangerous animals right like it can take you down and um, this is called the clinging fire okay and so where where are you clinging to old fire and so your that's why your throat chakra is so blue okay again spirit is reminding you the unicorn right zero the unicorn here being like a brand new beginning it is also right that um void of the moon you can create what you want and desire now, but do not plant it until after the void of the moon. Okay, that's the important part. And then we've got the Wolverine here, right? Again, I feel that this is talking about the challenge here is that the masculine energy, right, is that of those wild horses, okay? running into the water, running away from this old fire, the masculine within us is smart enough to know old fire, scary, run. Okay. Uh, the feminine is not afraid at all, just floating through the water. But I also have this feeling, right, that the feminine, without our identity, right, we're like, well, who am I? Okay. So you get deliverance, right? Self-esteem, the moose. So there's that feeling, okay? And the way that it came out here is that ego is trying to triumph and it's going to create some exhaustion if you don't be aware of that, right? Raccoon, nocturnal animal. Um, we don't really see a lot of raccoons around here. And in fact, I can remember a family having a raccoon as a pet when I was a child. And it was like attached to this tree like all the time. <laughs> like it was very, very sad. And it takes us to the sea otter here, to the selkie, right? Like where are you holding on to that old belief 
of right the old uniform, the old outcome as you're going through this transition that you really need to clear up. Okay, because where we're moving towards now is um, the high priestess energy, right? When we go into thought, we're being guided by higher power and not ego. And our sight can give us direction, but not interpretation. Okay, and this is part of, right, the snake in this energy is not releasing karma. It's creating a new cycle. Okay, so this is this energy of this alchemy where you are using a new cycle, right? And you're going forward as a different energy here. But the, again, the feminine here, the deer, you're trying to hold on to this old power. And that's going to block your magician, your magic Okay, this new start. What spirit wants to guide you on here is, it says exactly, fellowship with men. Okay, rebirth here. Fellowship with your masculine side. Okay, the links. Bring in a little bit of listening and solitude within your feminine and masculine. It's like, spend some time breathing in and out and letting those energies move together, okay? Because that's what creates something really amazing, okay? There's the fire, and we've got the fire ants. So the fire ants, right, can be very toxic to anything trying to stop them from doing what they're doing. And what we're doing right now is we're moving towards the fire, right? The fire ceremony that will be on, um, let's see, it's Saturday the 15th when we do the fire codes. And those of you that are seeing this later that are not a part of Patreon, um, I will put a link down below where you can uh, go ahead and purchase that fire codes ceremony after the fact, okay? But we're coming in here, all right, with this expansive energy, okay? And again, I feel like they're saying song G, okay? The orca. I feel like that G is very, very symbolic right now and super important, okay? So what do you need to know to help you, okay, with the new cycle? Okay, what do you need to know for the new cycle? Okay, what do you need to know for the fellowship within your own union? You want this one? Okay. And what do you need to know about the fire with G? Okay, don't forget that this is all your rewards for all the work that you've already done. Celebrate that. We are, you know, works in progress. Oliver is like, stupid, stupid humans. <laughs> we are always works in progress, okay? So the unknown is your friend. Again, uncertainty. Lean in to embrace what is next, okay? Walking into the fire is not a bad thing in this instance, okay? It's walking you towards this uh, progression, they're telling me, okay? It is time for a quantum leap. Prepare for a makeover. We're going from the six to a seven. There will be a little bit of a challenge in aligning our chakras, okay? Um, to our new frequency. That's why it's kind of like a birthing process, they've told me. And I feel like it's really essential that we remember that we are growing, right? Flowing, moving our bodies, okay? And never a crowd on the leading edge, 
okay? 11, honor those who honor you. It's a reminder, your soul tribe will show up for you. The rest will not. I posted something in the community tab the other day, right? There are those that are just going to come and take, okay? And then they're going to grow from your river and then they're not going to replenish, okay? Don't just keep flowing your energy into their resources, okay? Find that tribe that connects and grows and gifts and receives with you. Okay. So, what else here? Yeah, okay. Again, the feminine, you're growing in to this vessel of fire, right? I do feel... Like, um, Mars is playing its part. I can't remember. Do we have Mars in here? Yes, Mars enters Capricorn on the 24th, planning, right? And prepping for the movement forward. So I'm really being shown here, okay? The 24th will be very important for how you feel in your vessel. Okay. Thank you. Okay, again, Mars energy here, the queen. Be open to the awareness that you have started this new cycle. Do not try to hold on to the old cycle, okay? It does not serve you. Thank you. Okay, yep, underneath it there we've got the swan, right? The swan, the lovers, divine union, protecting this new birth, okay? So we've got the storm. We are coming into a storm. It's important that we understand that. And I even posted that the other day when I talked about the fire ceremonies, right? Like I was told right before the fire ceremonies came to me that a storm is coming, Okay, it was in journey space. They said a storm is coming. And that's why we need to start with the fire codes now. Um, in ceremony, the wolf was there. Okay, um, coming in as part of the pack. Um, I feel like the masculine wolf, the alpha wolf, has a bit of work to do in order to do that. But there's also this energy of, in my journey the other night, Mother Mary came in and I kind of went inside of Mother Mary. I was in her embodiment. And just like with any spiritual animal totem, right, any angels, when you go within, it's a healing process. So really work on healing yourself, right? Okay. You're changing, shapeshifters, transforming, becoming this new you. Again, the siren, right? The selkie. Okay. The ego will hold on to the old identity. The new heart does not require that. Remember the energy that I talked about before? in uh, the Aurora Borealis, and I talk about that um, in one of my last two books. But I talk about that, um, I think it's in, I think I talk a little bit about that in both the Celestial Spark and the from the Diary of Wu. But like that's how I started my whole shamanic process, was sitting on this cliff with Mother Spider watching the Aurora Borealis. And it took me two years <laughs> to return to the Aurora Borealis. Spirit saying, right, there are mountains to climb to get there, but it is all part of the sacred temple. It's all part of the golden ratio, okay, that we are working with, right? We're doing the fire codes, we'll do the water codes, 
we'll do the coats of the heavens, right? To get all three of those centers. Okay. There's a bit of protection going on here, right? Trying to shield the heart from getting out there in the world. We do that with our newborns, right? I don't want anyone to touch you. I don't want anyone to kiss you. I don't want you getting any viruses. I don't want you getting anything, okay? And Spirit is reminding you that um, part of our energy, right, the aliens inside and outside of us are reliant upon our not only care and giving to them, but our care and giving of others, okay? And so, especially, I feel uh, by, I'm almost feeling that this offering by the new moon in February, I feel like to within two weeks after that, okay, there's going to be a huge shift and you're being guided to be open to what you need to give to be very aligned with all of that energy within. Okay, now what's really funny, this card wanted to really come out, so I'm going to start with that. Okay, the Page of Swords. There's a very defensive energy here in the feminine. Okay, the feminine energy has cut some pretty toxic cords in the last two years. And feels, again, that Mars energy, right? Especially on the 24th, right? Really keep that in mind. This energy of I'm defensive, okay? I'm not moving forward. I'm defensive. So advice for that spirit, okay? From the Page of Swords, move to the Knight of Swords, okay? Where you can still have your sword, but you don't stand in defiance, you move through it, okay? We're always moving through it. And there's the white Newman, okay? Allow the higher self of this divine masculine energy to really help care give your heart at this time, okay? When you do your work with your inner feminine and masculine, let your masculine really be nurturing and, and healing and massaging and loving, okay? Because the king of wands here is saying, okay, he's throwing like this piggy bank they're showing me aside right now. It's probably not what it is, but that's what they're showing me. And saying, okay, in this space right here, I'm ready to create in the fire. I do not care about the money right now. I care about the fire. Okay, I care about the creation. Thank you, Spirit. Do you want those? Yes. Do you want those? No. Okay. All right, Five of Swords with the Nine of Pentacles, okay? Feminine, you don't know how to deal with that. It's like it breaks your brain, okay? Um, how could the masculine not care about the money and only care about this fire? And the masculine is like, isn't this what you've wanted? Haven't you wanted me to move into my heart? Okay? Feminine, Queen of Swords, and King of Swords. You do not have to get defensive against your masculine energy. Your masculine energy really does want the same as you, but they will get defensive right back at you if you get defensive with them. But you are equals, okay? Okay, again, 
again, they're really showing you the feminine is afraid without her identity, okay? Without her sulky, okay, identity in this emotion most space she is lost okay but this is because the deception of the heart feeling like you are not having a new beginning right with the with your inner masculine and outer masculine even because we've got the moon in reverse with the six of cups and the moon in this deck in the upright okay there's our lovers, okay? It's almost like a hidden love, so to speak, that's starting to come out and be illuminated to blossom. In the reverse, it's like it doesn't exist, but it's just new, right? Look, the masculine is bringing the feminine, their blue flower, okay, which is my symbol. Blue is my symbol of the divine heart, right? And the throat chakra. But where is the blue for the feminine? It's above her head, okay? You're moving your throat chakra in ways that are not healing it. Okay, 10 of wands at the bottom here. You've overburdened yourself with all of this, these fears of the past coming back. All right. But um, again, you're holding that pentacle energy in your heart and spirit says, no, nope, now is the time, right? Horse and rider come into a union and have this healing energy come through, okay? Because the masculine energy within you is going through this really beautiful healing, okay? So let's get a card here and what pops out, right? Spirit says, please take our counsel. This comes from your highest self. Okay. Yeah. And then we have the high priestess again, right? Please take our angelic counsel. This comes from your highest self. All the synchronicities, all the messages that you are getting. Okay. And it's, um, an 11 and then a 12, right? It's progression. The progression is going to continue. Your messages are going to continue to get more uh, aligned with what you need to know. And spirit says, really, okay, release the past. You are in a new heart, all right? So I hope that this helps you. I will see you guys next week. If you would like to have this in the proper week, you can just go below and join Patreon. Okay, much love, guys. Bye.